if you live in the UK and are not a member of our beloved aristocracy, then the chances are that you are going to have quite a small garden. The reason for that is because our property prices are so high, you just can't have a large garden. Anyway, you have your small garden and you've decided that you might have a bit of fun and create an exotic garden. So, if that's your decision, what do you need to know? So two of the decisions that we made were regarding focal points and from our property we've got two focal points. The first one is the kitchen where we specifically planted plants which were small at the front and slowly got taller and taller at the back so we got like an extended view including that lovely row of its red berries that looked like the African tulip tree. The second is from the conservatory where we created that extended view that goes beyond our, our fence line. Uh, the large tree that we, uh, that we legged up to about seven, eight foot tall so you don't bang your head. And also the, uh, the tropical borders that are on the right hand side. Now what we're going to talk about is the framework of ideas that we use in order to choose and display our plants. Now these aren't rules, they're just ideas that we use. You can choose to use them, they're neither right nor wrong, but it just gives you an idea of what, what we like to look at and then you can decide whether to implement that or not in your own garden. So for us probably the most important thing that we consider when choosing plants for the garden are do they look exotic? They, they don't need to be exotic but they do need to give that kind of exotic look and plants like this hardy banana give a, I mean they give a traditional sort of exotic look as, uh, as, as do palms but you know we put other plants in here like the, uh, the woodland tobacco uh, dahlias, which are actually exotic plant because they're from semi-tropical regions in South America. But you see behind that we have an oriental lily, which you say it's exotic looking, but you wouldn't say that it's from the tropics. But uh, it's such a fantastic looking plant, I really wanted it in here. And over here on this side border we're using hotters, which again, they, these aren't tropical plants, but they have these wonderful large architectural sort of leaves and, and because of that we've put those in because they, they, they give that feeling of the tropics and as we, as we move up you've got a, a palm on the left hand side there which again you know you've got to have a palm in exotic gardens and then behind that next to that old um, water boat we've got a, a tree fern there and again not tropical but it gives such a wonderful look to it and as we go higher we've, uh, we've mimicked the kind of Spanish moss that you get in the Americas by using this dichondra hanging out the pot, which I think that works to a great effect. And further beyond, we put some uh, uh, red flowering plants in the trees to give that idea of epiphytes. And in the tropics, South America in particular, you do see a lot of red flowers predominantly because that is what the pollinating birds and insects go for. After that we like to look at colour and although exotic gardens tend to be on the whole green we like to try and mix it out, we like to get a lot of reds and burgundies and yellows and whites in here and we like to mix them up, you know, give good strong contrast, so we've got this lovely formion against the, uh, the green of a, a datura there and we've got a, a, a giant um, tree daily behind that but then we're, 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 we're um, bouncing off the, uh, the pinky red of the formium to the pinky red of the Ricinus, to the pink of the Salvia, and then we've got the bronze uh, of the Dahlia, and we sort of bounce that, that dark colour along. So we've got, the, uh, we've got the canna there, and then we've got another canna further back. So that bronze keeps bouncing about into the, uh, into the green, and along with the flowers, we've got the white, because that always strikes out. Typically, we like to plant a lot of red flowering plants, but you can't just blankly cover only red, because that will get boring so we do like to mix it up with some strong yellows, uh, some strong whites um, but really there's no hard and fast rule, it's just a lot of it is feeling, well, does it evoke the look that we are trying to create. Now the last thing to look at, and it's not last because it's the least important, they're all equally important, is the heights and the spreads of the plants. When you're planting these plants you need to make sure that they have the space to grow and also that you're planting plants that aren't 
going to hide another plant you've just put behind it because you know as well as me that buying these plants can get quite expensive so you don't want to buy something that's a bit fancy it's a bit lovely and stick it at the back and then you never see it again you need to make sure that you've got a sweeping view of the plants so you've got your so typically your small plants at the front your large plants at the back and space between them so they can grow to their best effect so in conclusion, I like to have large architectural leaves, but also a big range of contrast in shapes, sizes, and colors. I like a lot of red flowers, but uh, I don't want just red flowers. I also want flowers that really stand out. I like size. I like something that's gonna really catch my eye as I walk around the garden. So that is already quite a lot of information that you've got to consider when choosing and planting your plants. Well, there are two other things that you also need to be aware of, and that is succession of flowers and planting, and also what your garden is going to look like in the winter. Now, regarding succession of flowering, uh, most exotic gardens really do look their best between July and September. After that, they tend to uh, run out of steam and before that there really isn't a lot to look at so you want to look at flowering times you know so to try and widen out that seasonal interest with an exotic garden and the second thing is this come the winter not much is going to happen a lot of the plants especially the ones that we use in our garden generally herbaceous so they will die back down in the winter you might not see them again until the following June so that's quite a long time so you've got to think about early flowering plants, you've got to think about evergreen plants. You don't want a garden that's only practical for three, four months of the year. You want to try and extend that look all the way through. So it really does just come down to research, see what other people are doing that you like, and uh, and think about things before you plant them. Do, don't just, don't just do a small part in one part of the garden, something different in another part of the garden. You want, to, you want it all to kind of marry up together to get one big exotic effect. Uh, anyway, I think I've covered quite a lot of ground there. I don't want to add much more onto that. But if you've got any thoughts, any wait, comments, wait, any great wait, ideas wait, when it wait, comes wait, to Wait, 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 I've got another thing. Another thing that's important. You want to curate a structure of plants, a structure of plants that act like the bones of the garden around which all the other plants are the flesh. And these are things like your hardy evergreen plants. So you're looking at tall yucca elephantipes, you're looking at cordylines, you're looking at a range of palms, you're looking at formiums. You want all these, these solid plants, all your own evergreens, properly spread out and even to create that, that theme of evergreen plants throughout the garden. Get those in place, think about those first because these are the ones that you're gonna hang the rest of your garden off. Anyway, that really is it. I don't wanna put any more information, I've probably given you too much already. But uh, anyway, thank you, see you next video.